Hello again, my name is Joost Peters and I compose music for dressage freestyles. Um, and today I wanted to talk about copyright, copyright in music especially, because you have copyright also when you write a book or when you make a painting, but I want to talk about copyright in music. If you compose a piece of music, like I often do <laughs> for clients, um, you automatically have copyright on the work. So, um, for instance, if I composed music for Edward Gall uh, and undercover, that was an original piece, I am the copyright holder of that music. I don't have to do anything for it. It's just a legal thing uh, that I, I'm the owner of the work, actually. Of course, I give permission to my client, in this case, Edward Hall, uh, to use the music for the shows. Um, it doesn't mean I automatically give the right to him to reproduce the music. So he's not allowed to make a DVD from it uh, or a showcase film or whatever, uh, or to promote the stallions um, with my music under it. Um, if, he has, if he wants to do that, he can ask my permission and then it's okay. But as long as he doesn't have permission, it's, it's not legal to do it. Um, so if I make music for a freestyle for my client, he can use it at a show without any problem. If you use music from uh, official sources like uh, Spotify or you buy a CD like from Michael Jackson, for instance, um, if you use this music, uh, it's okay when you have a public, public performance with it, so if you write it in a show, where the organization is paying for the uh, uh, use of music in a public area. So, uh, in Holland, it's Buma Stembra who organizes that. Uh, every country has an organization, and in, in Belgium it's Sabam. Uh, all over the world, these organizations are, and they all have different names, so I don't know them all. Um, uh, okay, so if if the organization pays for the rights, and in Holland, for instance, all the shows do, because they also have background music in the pause or at a jumping show, and they have to pay for that. So they also pay for the music that's used in the freestyles. So that's no problem if you use this music. If you have a freestyle made of Michael Jackson music and you put it on YouTube, uh, or you want to sell it, uh, you you want to make more CDs out of, uh, from it and you copy it and you sell it to other writers or, or anybody who likes it, that's not allowed without permission of the copyright holder, in this case the family uh, of Michael Jackson. So if you, if you want to do that, uh, you have to get permission uh, from the publisher. Um, if I, as a freestyle composer, use Michael Jackson music, for a freestyle, um, I don't own the, the the copyright of the music I use, so uh, I'm, I, I'm not allowed to reproduce it in many ways. What I am allowed is to rearrange it and make a new composition of it, you know, of different songs. And for that work, I also own copyright. So it's partly for Mark Jackson and it's partly for me. Uh, so if I do that, you, uh, nobody is allowed to copy it without my permission. So I give permission to the writer, uh, like I did, uh, Mark Jackson was uh, Joyce Leonard. I made a freestyle for Joyce Leonard with uh, Mark Jackson music. Um, and she has permission to use it at a competition. She doesn't have permission to reproduce it but, or sell it, but she can use it at a show, no problem. Uh, uh, what I uh, I got a call from somebody. She saw a Belgian writer writing to Joyce Lena's music, and that's not allowed because I only give permission to Joyce Lena's. Um, they talked to that girl, and she said she didn't care about it. She she had it uh, copied from uh, YouTube, and she didn't give a damn about copyright. So uh, okay, we'll see about that later. But. Anyway, she's not allowed. Actually, what she's doing is illegal. You're not allowed to use it without my permission. Um, if you make a freestyle at home uh, using all kinds of CDs or music you find on the internet, please make sure you have permission to use it, uh, to use it on a show, but also to use it, uh, or, or if you want to put it on YouTube or whatever, make sure you have the rights to, because otherwise you can get in, can get into trouble. Um, sounds very, uh, but it isn't. Just stick to the rules and that's it. Uh, the only uh, exception to the rule is the Olympic 
Games. Because if the Olympic Games, like we had the, uh, this year, um, for all the music that's used, the writers have to declare that they have permission to use that music from the artist or the copyright holder. In most cases, the artist or the publisher of the artist. Um, I was lucky enough to work with Elton John and uh, Robbie Williams and Sting and Guy Chambers. And when we did those projects, before we started working, we made sure we could use the music and we had all the rights. So because they were working along, they uh, gave permission to use the music automatically. Um, but at the Olympics, you really need it because I, as a composer, have to sign for the music that the writer is entitled to use it. If if there's a music being used that is from another artist, I can't sign for it. So if you make a freestyle out of YouTube, uh, YouTube, YouTube music, and you would uh, use it at the Olympics, I can't sign that they have permission to use that YouTube music. They have to get it from the publisher of YouTube. That's for the Olympics. There's always a lot of work, paperwork, but yeah, it's the biggest show in the world. So uh, it's always great when the freestyles are be, uh, being played there. So. Uh, but that's all I can say about copyright. Um, if you have any questions about it, or you're in doubt if you can use music or whatever, just email me to the email address down below here. Here, yeah. And um, I will see if I can answer it or find the answer you need. Um, okay, that was it. Um, next time we're going to talk about uh, canto music. Um, that's great for me always canto music and there are a lot of ways to make great canto music and I will show you the differences in my uh, next video. So stay tuned, please like my videos and I hope to see you soon again. Bye bye!